Welcome back everyone to another brand new video today. Apologies for the few weeks off I've had from making videos. I've been extremely focused on my own businesses, launching new products and things like that. But in today's video, we're gonna take a deep dive into Performance Max campaigns on Google and sharing with you my top three strategies to essentially make them work or to improve the results you're seeing with them. Now, just before we get any further, if you're struggling with Google Ads, if you want to integrate Google Ads with your business and you're not using them already, then my Google Ads agency, AdWord, can certainly help. I'll leave a link in the top of the description. Head over to our website, fill out the application form, and we'll get back to you as quickly as possible. The first thing I wanna talk about as point number one in this video is the structure slash build of your Performance Max campaigns. Now, a couple of years ago, when Google really forced PMAX down our throat, a lot of people simply just used feed only performance max campaigns which is essentially you have one asset group with no assets and you only attach your product feed to that asset group essentially making it just a shopping campaign or a smart shopping campaign now granted there was a time where this did actually work really well but as of now it's something I personally don't use at all and this actually does go against Google's best practices for the performance max structure and if you're trying to run a feed only PMAX campaign then you might as well just run standard shopping and have more control and more data to analyze from that because by doing a feed only you're essentially only wanting to run on the shopping network so you might as well just run standard shopping now there's nothing wrong with standard shopping campaigns they in fact do really well for me and there's a place and a time to use them but there's really no point using performance max just to use feed only now there are a couple ways I structure my pmax campaign so I'm going to give you two examples today one for a campaign that is just a single product and then another campaign type where I have for example all my other products now I do have an asset group in all my PMAX campaigns whether it's a one products campaign or a campaign with all my products I do have a feed only asset group there's nothing wrong with that but the rest of the campaign and the other asset groups are fully built meaning I'm maxing out the number of images videos titles descriptions and all those other areas of the asset group basically giving Google as much content to work with for each asset group so the first example here being a one product performance max campaign to begin with the way I structure to this I start with five to ten different asset groups like I said one of those being feed only and the rest I have exactly the same content in each asset group so that's the same images same text headline and things like that and the only difference in each asset group is going to be the audience signal I'm using in each asset group and that is so in the early stages you can identify clear winners in terms of which audience signals are working best for your business and when that's the only variable that's different in each asset group you'll be able to clearly tell which signal signal is performing better than others and then you can simply turn off the ones that aren't doing well test new ones and then as you scale out different content in your PMAX campaigns you know which audience signals to use for future and in other asset groups because they've proven themselves at such an early stage so like I said when you identify those signals that are doing well and you want to for example cycle in new images and things like that in your PMAX campaigns you can create new asset groups use your new content even new text ideas you know new descriptions new images videos but you can use signals that have already proven themselves to work meaning less wasted ad spend because you're already using something that you know is going to work now the final point for this first thing is just to show you the effectiveness of the other areas of performance max that being you know youtube search display and things like that so i've highlighted a campaign here on my us business this is month to date so march 1st to march 12th so less than two weeks so you can see the number of track conversions is 77 here now if we go into the campaign and quickly check obviously it says the same data there now if we go over to the product tab here you can see only one eligible product this is a one product performance max campaign same time frame here you can see it's only tracked 9.7 so let's say 10 conversions for this product what this means is on the shopping network or the shopping channel whatever you want to call it it has had 9.7 conversions so out of those 77 conversions the campaign has had only nine or ten of those have come from shopping which means the vast majority of the other conversions and sales this campaign has got me have come from other channels on Google such as display YouTube and search and this is just a prime example of how effective performance max can be now at getting you you know high quality traffic a good number of conversions from other channels and not just relying on shopping so if you're using feed only this is basically a really good example of what you could be missing out on now point number two is going to be the data analysis of performance max which is incredibly important and will help you if you use it right make you know really good decisions for the future of your whole ad account not just individual campaigns now a lot of people using this as an example again would judge the performance of a performance max campaign on either the listing group level or the product level which is essentially only the
the shopping side of performance max so you can see again someone looking at this might not think it has been you know a very good performing campaign but when you look at it at an overall campaign level you can see it's completely different and you know there's eight times as many conversions as what's shown on the product listing tab so if you're analyzing your pmax campaigns in this way you could be turning off campaigns that perhaps are doing really well and you're not really realizing that because you're looking only on the shopping side of things now i've spoke about this a million times and that is the insights tab and this can be used in all campaign types but we're going to use it for pmax here there is so much useful information in the insights tab on performance max that not only is going to help you expand your pmax campaign but will also allow you to grow other campaigns and start new campaigns based on the data this is giving you so for example if we scroll down to this campaign here obviously i'm going to blur out the search terms but this is giving data of the last seven days and you can see here it has given me groups of keywords that are converting best for this campaign now this is incredibly useful because what i do with this information i then go and start separate search campaigns and obviously we all know with search your targeting is essentially you give google a group of keywords i personally just use broad match but anyway instead of testing hundreds of different keywords i usually grab one or two different groups of these from the insights tab in pmax and use those as the keywords now the reason i do this is because it's already telling me which keywords are converting and are profitable so it completely eliminates the wasted ad spend of trying hundreds of different keywords when you can literally use the insights tab in front of you and the date of the pmax campaigns giving you to run profitable search campaigns alongside pmax now yes pmax is on the search network anyway but running separate search campaigns can be extremely beneficial especially you know for example if you want to run the same product but to a custom landing page for example or a collection page page and things like that there's just different things you can do in search that you can't do with pmax and i've done this for a, at least a couple years now so it's something i definitely recommend and another question people have about how to find the right audience signals for their asset groups in pmax again once you've let it run for a bit it will start to give you audience signal suggestions in the insights tab here so it will usually give you a top five i mean you can see up to usually a hundred or so in here but it will give you in-market audience signals it, it will give you affinity audience signals personally for me again completely just just test it yourself but i find more success with in market type rather than affinity types and that is just what you know my account has given me i see on some clients affinity works better so split test both so again going back to the first point of data analysis a lot of people wonder okay so how do i see which audience signals are performing better because when I go to the asset group tab you can see here it doesn't give any data now all you need to do it's slightly cut off on my screen here but next to the summary button here you've got a table button and quick tip when you're naming your asset groups put the audience signal name you're using in that asset group in the title of the asset group so when you get to a screen like this you can see what audience signal you're using now I'm going to blur out a few because they obviously include things but you can see here I've got a broad asset group which I've turned off broad I usually put down when there's no audience signal so it's completely broad you can see i've got feed only running here and another one up here with past buyers now all very self-explanatory so if i do an all time actually we'll do last 30 days for this campaign because it's fairly new anyway so you can see here i've turned off the broad asset group and that is because it wasn't quite achieving the roas i wanted to is it a 2.1 and then i've got other asset groups here like the past buyers audience signal one that is a 2.7 a which is considerably better and because of that i've turned broad off and that will allow Allow more budget to go towards the other asset groups that are more profitable and you can see the other ones i've turned off either had low spend no conversions and this one here i turned off because it had an unprofitable roas so the point here is name your asset groups after the audience signals you're using and use the table view on the asset group tab to basically see which ones are doing best if you've got low ROAS or unprofitable ROAS just turn them off that's what I do you can see it's literally right in front of you here now just before we move on to point number three I do have a small honorable mention it's only an honorable mention because it's just a very small point but when you are testing your final URL in the asset groups don't just limit that to your product page in other campaigns I found great success with using either collection pages here you know just the default Shopify collection pages I often use gem pages to build custom landing pages for either just a dedicated product or i also use gem pages to build out um, other collection pages and basically just make them more eye-catching and high converting so don't just limit this to a product url i personally avoid using just your home page url i either use product collection but you can start to use like i say custom landing page urls here so it's just something to bear in mind and split test as well and point number three is how you distribute your products in a performance max campaign so i've spoken a lot today about single product performance max campaigns that's obviously very self-explanatory in terms 
terms of you have one product, you build five to 10 asset groups for that one product. So what if you have a catalog of 100 plus products, for example, and they're in different categories? Now, if you've got products that you know aren't necessarily winners yet, you're not gonna put them into their own PMAX campaigns from the get-go. You are gonna want to put them all into a single PMAX campaign. Again, don't rely on feed only, but build out loads of asset groups for these products. And the best way to do this, rather than doing five to 10 asset groups per product, especially if you have 100 plus, that's just gonna take too long and will be incredibly difficult to keep on top of, analyze and make decisions. The best way to do it is break them down into categories. So let's say you have got a gym website, for example, and you sell women's gym clothes. Instead of having an asset group for each legging product you have, you could put just leggings into one category and have five to 10 asset groups just for leggings. You could have five to 10 asset groups for sports bras, hoodies, you know, equipment and things like that. So you get the idea and that will allow you to provide relevant assets to that product collection. Whereas if you put all of them in one you're going to have you know images for skipping ropes when you're also selling leggings and it's just going to really create a bit of a conflict and not be very efficient and this is the way i do it in my campaigns that have you know a lot of products and it's just an efficient way of providing google with relevant assets for each product category but it's also a good way for you to be able to analyze the data clearly and finally if you're watching this video and you're only running standard shopping campaigns at the moment don't be afraid to try performance max campaigns you're only going to know if it works or not if you try it and over the years, Performance Max continues to prove to be the best campaign type across both of my accounts and for my clients as well. It only is becoming more intelligent with Google's machine learning and AI and things like that. It is the future for Google Ads. So if you haven't already, it's definitely worth testing them. And in the few strategies I've mentioned in today's video are a good way to structure your campaigns, analyze them, and hopefully grow them as well. So if you've got any questions, leave a comment down below. Drop me a message on Instagram if you need direct help from me, or if you want my agency to help out with your business on Google, click the link in the top of the description. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.